Okay, so uh, a few people out there have probably heard about the Bale Fang UV5R mentioned in some other people's videos. This is the radio. You pick them up on Amazon, eBay, or Alibaba.com. It's uh, roughly similar in size, let's say, to the older generation ICOMs, which really aren't all that old. Although it involves a lot of neat little technological improvements. From what I can tell, this thing's, I'm not going to call it a knockoff, but it's an answer to the Yaesu VX5R, which is a very good radio, very popular worldwide, um, capable of a lot of channels on, the, on both the 2 meter and the 4 meter band. I gotta double check things. I don't think that it can cross over into the GMRS FRS, but it's a strong possibility that it can. Uh, I, I gotta double check some stuff on this. And the thing is, the owner's manuals with these, obviously pretty abbreviated, not a lot going on with it. There are people who write large hardcover books on how to program its predecessor in the market, which was functionally the Yaesu VX5R. Uh, there's people who write pretty big books on that. Uh, to exploit this to its fullest potential, you're going to have to get additional literature. Comes package in pretty good, fair retail packaging. You're not likely to see this in regular stores. Okay, you're not likely to see it in a radio, regular two-way radio store. You're going to get this from, you know, a specialist electronics store. Maybe somebody you might feel is a little bit shady, but that's that's all that's going to get this because this is a wideband transceiver. Uh, has wideband coverage. That's something normally you're not, not even going to see readily available in the United States. It's hard to say how long it would be readily available even after this, this, this video goes up. Um, but it does UHF and VHF. It'll do, um, I think it'll receive on standard FM radio. Um, it has a lot of, lot of stuff going on here. Um, uh, it has it has a lot of stuff going on, and you can probably program these things. You know, again, work with computer input output. Uh, takes a relatively standard Motorola jack on the side, and we can get uh, uh, through a company I work with on a couple of little things out of Finland. We can get a we can get a, a speaker voice mic type thing for that um, little headset, little tactical headset. But if you want to get some good radios for reasonable money, uh, the Baofeng UV5R is definitely a winner for, you know, SHTF uh, type stuff. Just realize that you're going to be in a hell of a learning curve uh, learning how to use this thing to its full potential. And if you're part of a, a prepper group or survival group, this may be one of the things that you want to um, purchase and then hand over to a specialist in your group who you trust to get all the programming right on these things and go from there. This is not an amateur, they call it amateur radio uh, only because it's, it's, well, let me tell you something. This is from the world of amateurs who probably know more than professionals when it comes to using a two-way radio. So, you know, highly skilled amateur radio to program one of these to its fullest potential. Once it's all been fully programmed, though, you have, uh, you know, relatively secure communication. It's not quite as secure as, let's say, using a, a, a throwaway cell phone. Uh, but it's, it's relatively secure, and, of course, you're not paying $0.10 cents a minute to use it. So, pretty durable. I don't think it's submersible, but if you have this out in the rain or some bad weather, don't sweat it. Would I suggest getting a backup? Yes. What I also suggest, if you have a group of people that you're making some decisions on what to do with two radio situation, try to make your decisions all at once and not have a mismatch radio situation like I have here. Um, this is not where you want to be when you do your two-way radio situation. Mismatching just means that you've overly complicated your programming situation, you've tripled your work. Your work in programming everything goes up exponentially by every type of radio you have. So, you know, think about standardizing. Maybe mark your radios, number them, just in case they're, uh, they're getting switched around after they've been programmed. Um, you know, so a little unique marking, you know. I'm not saying put your name and social security number on the side of it, but some kind of unique marking that lets you know that you didn't get your radio mixed up with somebody else's. Or nobody pulled some slicky trick with uh, swapping your radio with one that's maybe been 
programmed with a bug or double transmit or something although that's not as likely as somebody just simply you know using some kind of a monitoring hardware these things are easier for an uh, amateur person to monitor with the right equipment than let's say a cell phone um, but also on the professional side it's actually the other way around it's it's more difficult for let's say the NSA or some big bad super spy agency to get in on what is being said on one of this type of radio than it is at common cell phones because there is no centralized switching with two-way radios it's radio to radio or radio to repeater to radio and then we can talk a little bit or you can look up elsewhere and how people set up their uh, uh, repeaters and all that stuff that's, that's something I personally don't get into but that Baofeng UV5R good radio this is what it looks like available on Amazon eBay and Alibaba plus uh, any one of several probably uh, Asian websites uh, I believe this is uh, available over the counter in Canada 80 70 to 150 dollars depending on where you buy it